Hi, um, so this is part three. What's part three all about? Um, the first two were, as the title says, um, building uh, an AWOS machine from scrap. Um, part three is kind of the next stage, is where you actually, well, no, I don't want to build it out of scrap, I want to build it out of a new machine, but I haven't got much money. If you're like me, you have got a lot of spare cash. So uh, it's building a machine that you can run AROS on and have a great Amiga experience. So we've got a number of things. The one thing I didn't actually show you was, and I've done this before, um, AROS runs on this. I mean, if I mentioned it before about the drivers and so on, but with the drivers uh, I got um, developed, um, managed to get it on this little AROS, not AROS, little Acer Aspire uh, netbook. Absolutely fantastic. And if you plug it into um, a big, you know, big monitor, a keyboard, and mouse. You you get a fantastic experience. I'm just going to shut that down. So that's that's the little netbooks. Because all what we're all trying to do is have this on x86, right? So let's go through what we had. So we had this one, which was um, donated by a friend. Um, 1.5 gigahertz. Um, great little machine actually. I, I just put a, a different graphics card to give it 3D because the, the Nvidia card was fine actually. Worked really nicely. Um, but I just like the idea of 3D, so that was that was good. That cost me I think about 15, 20 pounds to add a card on it. Oh, I put a uh, full gig um, compact flash in there. Right, the second one, which was pr still actually probably my favourite out of all three of them, funny enough. But I've changed the case. <laughs> so I. I like if you remember the old case, okay, I bought a new one. Um, it was I think eighteen pounds, something like that. Um, very cool. <laughs> I really like it, and it's all lit up, so um, you uh, get to see it all lit up. Now, so the um, this video is really about this new one, um, and there's this sec this video is going to be sectioned up. But this is the um, the new case again, a really cheap case. Um, with brand new, comp well, mostly new components to be fair, new CPU, new motherboard, um, new RAM, um, and it's got the, but the, the graphics cards tend to be second. I'm hoping we're going to get some drivers, some new cards, which I might have some good news at some point, then we can put new graphics cards in it, um, but that's maybe coming soon. Um, but these, so this is, I paid £26 for a GTX 460, which is really fast, um, and uh, the sound card, and... Network card, you know, just, I've, I've, I've mentioned the prices. So that's that machine. Um, it is actually at the moment, it's got a, an ID hard drive in it. Um, but I'm going to swap that out for a compact flash to make it even quicker. But uh, yeah, there you go. So that's uh, that's brand new machine. Um, so this that's what this video is all, around, all about. Um, hope you enjoy it. And at the end, I'll have some conclusions. Okay, so here's the case. Um, really cheap case. Uh, 17 pounds, no, 18 pounds something. Um, it's an ATX case, uh, side window, uh, it's not set up yet as you can see, um, but uh, the, the idea was to be cheap. Right, so, uh, okay, so here's the motherboard, it's probably the most important part. Um, it's an ATX motherboard, um, and that's quite important because um, you need, if it's very rare you get PCI slots on micro ATX motherboards, you do occasionally, but... Um, I may have an update later on that, but uh, for now it's good to have PCI slots. So I've got three PCI slots as you can see. Um, I've got two uh, single bit um, 60, 60 single bit uh, PCIe slots and a full 16 bit, not 16 bit, 16 lane, sorry, uh, PCIe slot as well for the graphics card. Um, CPU in the middle. Um, a DDR4 memory. This is actually quite a mother, modern motherboard, even though it's got PCI slots on it. Um, it's uh, LGA 1151, uh, which means it's an Intel system. Um, I later on I probably will do one with a Ryzen um, because I think that's probably the best one all round to go for. But that that's coming later. Right. So let's have a look at the other bits. So this is the PCIe um, IDE card. Remember I I mentioned that in the last video. Um, there you can see the adapter for a solid stake, um, sorry, compact flash card and the um, cable. Next to that is the sound blaster. It's very important you get the right one. And let me show you because it has a specific chip on it, which is an there you go, Emu 10K. That's the one you need that chip on it. They're about a ten of those cards. These cards here are about uh, seven pound. I think I paid for that. Compact flash, fifteen twenty pound for the card, depending on the size. The actual adapter is about three pound fifty. Uh, over here, you can see I've got my Intel 
uh, 10100 Pro PCI card. Um, I'm going to be experimenting with someone sent me, um, apparently there's a gigabit one which you can put in, in the, the small PCIe con uh, connectors. I'm going to give that a go because it should make it a lot faster. Uh, some DDR4 memory. Um, it's quite an expensive one, that one actually. You can get cheaper ones for about £30 for 4 gig, which is what you want to get. Um, and then here's the processor. It's just a, it's an Intel Pentium. Now, it's an interesting thing. I'm going to come on to this later on to explain why I chose that. One of the reasons is it's a 3.3 gigahertz, uh, but it's only £44. I, I, I can't go into details in this section, um, but I'm going to do a big thing on um, why I chose this processor later. So there you go, all on the power supply. Um, it's a 600 watt power supply, which means it can cope with the GPU. Um, and uh, it's about £17. Oh, let me go for the price, I suppose. Yeah, so the motherboard was £66, I think it was. The CPU, £45, come with the um, cooler. Memory, uh, that's not this one, but you can get memory for 4 gig for around four, £35, or £40. Pounds. That uh, internet card seven pound, ten pound for the sound, about seven pound for that. Fifteen twenty pound for the compact flash and three pound for the adapter. Quid for the uh, cable. Um, again the tower, uh, eighteen nineteen pound that was. All right. Hi. In this section, uh, we're going to discuss the whole use of uh, the CPUs and the choice I've made for my my new build. Um, Okay, so the obviously AROS is a, at the moment is a single core operating system, and we have multi core in development, and it is working. Um, it's not ready for uh, the main you know the main event is yet, but it's not far off, I don't think. Um, but I wanted to, to pick a CPU that was inexpensive um, and gave good performance for the money. Uh, and now a lot of people are going, oh, I want to use a, a sixteen core, you know. Ryzen i7 or whatever or Threadripper that's pointless isn't it I mean come on I mean uh, the amount of performance we actually need on uh, an Amiga type of operating system is minimal so um, I, I did do the research on this and I'm going to go through explaining these are these were my options so basically um, on price uh, I found this one which is quite nice and readily available it's the Intel Pentium G4400 now it's a 3.3 a gigahertz socket as you can see um, and it's dual core, um, but it's only forty-four pounds um, now. So for a brand new processor with the fan, that's really good value. Um, my other option was this one, which I already have. This one, which is in my my beast of a machine. I was originally going to build it based on that. That's I was going to just swap the motherboard, but mm -hmm. I did, oh yeah, thanks a lot. Um, but I decided against it um, purely because of performance, which I'm going to show you in a second. So that's the i7 which I've actually got. And you can see £331. The other option was going to be the Intel Core i3, which is the cheapest of the i3s. It's a 3.9 gigahertz socket. Um, and it's £103. Last option. Uh, alternative I was going to go for, which I will probably do another time, is to build a Ryzen 3 system, uh, which is a quad core. Um, and it's, it, again, it's a quad core instead of the i3, which is a dual core, um, and it's going to give good performance. Anyway, let's give it the reason. Let me show you the reason why. So I've gone for that. So if I, what I've done is I've loaded these into, um, it's called CPU Boss, and they compare the, the different CPUs. So here's the Intel. Uh, the G4400 Pentium against the 6700 and funnily enough it's got the same score um, now the reason for that is the biggest reason is obviously the um, the fact that the price differential for performance um, now bear this in mind it's really important to understand this you know you're also only using one core now when it goes dual multi-core you'll be able to use two cores and get double the performance so um, yes, you can have this other processor, but uh, you know, eight, eight th or seven threads of it is not being used. And if you scroll down, you'll, if you look at the, the, the performance figures, it's actually the single core performance is, is quite surprising, which I'm actually trying to find now. Uh, single core performance, yeah. So you can see here, the, the Pentium got a 7.5 and the Core i7 got an 8.1, which is not an awful lot more. Okay, uh, considering you know you're buying a chip with all them cores you're never going to use, so uh, 44 pound it wasn't far off it. And also bear in mind this CPU is running at probably four gigahertz, 
Uh, yeah, it's 4 gigahertz, and it's running 3.3, so it's only getting the performance based on the extra speed anyway. And then if we move over to the i3, it's the same thing again. The i3 is 102 pounds. Now, it's scored the i3 higher, um, and if you go to the single core, you'll notice single core speed is plus 17%. Okay? You rest your cores are not being used. Well, it's only one more core, to be fair. But you're, you're only getting 17%, and really that's even when you push up the clock speed to 3.9 it's it's minimal now they're saying 42 ignore that what you're interested in is this faster single core speed you know um so you're paying pretty much it's two and a half times the price for 10 percent performance a 17 percent performance increase on a single thread it isn't worth it the next one against the ryzen now again you know there's it's at least twice as much slightly more than twice as much and uh, where the single core performance is up 10%. So, you know, seriously, is it worth it? So I, I stand by this G4400 Pentium, um, which I think for £44 is an absolute bargain. Now, um, what I will do now, this is where I actually did not line this one up, which I should have done. I'm going to go through the, the, the business of the, um, the motherboards because... At the moment, I've concentrated on Intel motherboards. I'm, at some point, I may well do an AMD one because I like AMD. I, I've got to be honest. But so I'm going to motherboard now. The key thing for me was this: that you need to have ATX, okay? Because they have the PCI slots. Now, you, then again, you need to choose the PCI slot. So I went for the lowest, and then I scrolled down. And I just looked for the one with PCI slots. Now you can see both of these have PCI slots. Now this one here may actually be quite a good one to use. Uh, let's open that up into there. I don't think that one was there. This one that I purchased was the H110 Plus. And as you can see, it's got three PCI slots. It's got a couple of PCI single lanes. I'm gonna get this right this time. And it's got a PCI 16 lane. Now the CPU is only 16 lanes anyway, so um, you're probably going to end up, if you're going to use these two PCI slots, you're probably going to end up with an eight lane PCI, but that's just that's just because of the cheap process and Intel penny pinching, but I don't think anyone's going to notice this. Um, and so that's that one, um, and this is and this is another, I think it's the same, yeah, same make, uh, slightly different model, but th again, this one has the three PCI slots, which you actually only need two. Um, but what, as I said in the, the section either before or after this, um, we have a PCIe card I put in it for the IDE um, data, which I think I've covered. Uh, but anyway, yeah, there you go. So um, I, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, interestingly, um, and whilst I am seriously, and please don't, there's no sarcasm, is I truly mean this, the, um, the Tabor 1221 that's coming from Aeon soon, um, I think will be fantastic. But you have to understand that that board sounds like it's going to be 400 to 500 pounds or maybe euros for the board and chip. Now, this board and chip is 110 pounds with probably 50% more performance. Okay, we need to put this in perspective. Now, that means you're not running Amigro S, and if that's important that you follow the brand, then I understand that. Um, but um, I'm gonna have some comments on this later on anyway. So, um, but that, that's it. So bear that in mind. So 100, and, you got 44 pound there, and if you choose this board here, it's just literally about 100 pound, give or take a fiver, um, for an Aros brand spanking you really good performance dual core motherboard, uh, dual core chip with a rear. And the other thing, of course, is once you get multi core, if you decide later on, no, 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 I'm, I want to upgrade. You can just swap that CPU out and put in a fast one. Anyway, there you go. Uh, more soon. Okay, so just a quick look at the case. Uh, it's a really cheap case, this. Um, this was all about the uh, getting a budget build. As you can see, there's the board inside. There's the GTX 460. Um, and then the boards underneath here. You've already, I've already showed them, but I thought you might like to see that. I have actually got uh, an IDE hard drive in here at the moment. I'm gonna swap that out and put my compact flash in to make it even quicker. Um, but I'm gonna give you a little run through very briefly how fast this thing runs, okay? Okay, here we go. I'm just rebooting so you can see it now. Bear in mind, it's got a, it's got the IDE driver. And it's just a little bit slow. Now that's the card that I put in. It automatically recognises it as an IDE card. 
so you haven't got that problem with SATA which we do have now compact flash is the ideal thing now importantly one thing I did have a bit of a problem with this um, but uh, the sound card didn't seem to want to it was being corrupted um, and I found that if you put uh, there's a there's a uh, I put a no TLSF in the in the boot now TLSF is something that Michael wrote which is a memory handler which is much much a much better memory handler that was that was originally in AROS um, but it seems to be causing a bit of corruption so for this build and for the time being I've put that in there so everything works perfectly the no ACPI was there was coming up with some ACPI errors um, I don't like bother about ACPI I think he does is apparently he's turned turn off auto you know the, the shutdown button well I'm, I like to be able to turn the thing off so I put that in there to stop those errors but that was it basically um, so if I press F10 we'll go straight in now and as you can see which I think you can see yeah so here's the GTX uh, 460 don't, the corruption don't worry that's just something that's built in here's the card that's the sound card underneath is the little IDE card which goes in PCIe and uh, no I tell you about that and that's the network card that's booting. Now, with the compact flash, that would be literally just like that. Because I, I have actually put one in and tested it, but I thought I'd show it with this because it's still pretty damn cool. Um, right, so, um, you know, it's, it, it's the same machine. It's just faster. And it's actually hard to show you how much faster it is. However, if I run Cube, the um, other machine I was running, I've got a GT, uh, I think it's GT 7800. Um, now you'll note this would take a little bit longer to load. It's not much in it, actually. To be fair, uh, the ID on this card is actually very quick, which is quite nice, actually. So, um, but you, 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 it's hard to, to tell the difference in performance because my other machine, which you saw before, the scrap one was two and a half gigahertz, and this is three point three. But it has got a fast GPU, and if you look down, uh, maybe you can see it or not. If you look down here. Uh, if you can see, I'm actually getting about around 50 frames a second. Again, I am rubbish at this. I am trying to get better. That's a lie. And I, I, I actually like the games just for looking to see how cool they are, how cool the graphics are. I mean, it's more about hardware for me. Uh, anyway, but um, I'm getting about 50 frames a second. With the 7800, was getting uh, about 25, 30 frames a second. Now, bear in mind, this is running at. Um, 1920. If I put resolution, it's actually running at 1920 or well, 1910 by 1025 because I've got it in a window. Um, as you can see, so it's uh, it, it, it's running at a pretty a pretty high, so 50 frames a second, which I think is pretty good. Um, and it's not the fastest GPU in the world anyway. It's a pretty old GPU. Um, it, in fact, was the first GPU I ever bought. To be fair, um, so it's actually quite nice to get another one. Um, and I picked it up for like 25 quid. So, um, well, what what will help? I mean, let me just load up. What I can do though is I can load up my Amiga is now again very much slightly slower hard disk than the previous one okay uh, if I've loaded the right one yeah here we go right okay so we've got we'll load this up now what I've got in here again it's hard to show you the performance difference but we have got on here I'm gonna run sysinfo on here and you can see the performance I get from it so there's sysinfo if I run speed it actually runs too fast so it actually runs out of room for MIPS so you're going to get the same. Here we go. Look, 069. Now I'm taking that to mean uh, 1,069 MIPS, which I mean my the other one over there was 800, 700, 800. But you can, if you look back at the video, you can see I think it's 7 or 800. So it's in line with the extra performance. Interestingly, though, the M flops on the one was about 4 or 500, and this is only 180. So maybe the AMD uh, FPU chip is a lot more efficient. <laughs> Um, which is which is kind of interesting, uh, but all that could just be the settings of the FPU in the, in the emulator. But and you can see, I mean, its performance is ridiculous. Um, you know, and, and and it runs really nicely. So uh, I'll give an example. If I let me just shut this down, and then I'll go. Into, again, this will be slower than with the compact flash, but it's still actually pretty quick. Let's just load up. Um, I'm going to load up the Mac OS. Here we go. So we load up now. This is the um, if you remember rightly on a previous video. This is a complete shadow of my uh, Amiga 2000 workbench. I mean, it's literally the exact thing, just changed for um, for this system, basically. So uh, let me just load up Shapeshifter. Yes, ignore. I've got a couple of libraries I need to add in for AHI, but 
But if you can see the, you see how quick it runs. I mean, it just it just works really nice. Now, it's not in full screen because for some reason I can't set it to nineteen twenty by uh, ten eighty. I'm not sure why. Um, but there you go, it's working. And if I double click on this one here, there you go. I mean, like, it works really nicely. It's you know, it all works. I don't, I don't play games. I don't like Max much. To be fair. Um, so let's get rid of this. You, you've seen it working, and it, as I said, it just works beautifully. Um, if uh, I tell you what, I will do. I'll load. Um, shall I? Go? I'll show you this. I mean, you, you've you've seen performance, but I tell you what, I will do is I'll load up the other one again. Let me shut this down. Let me close this down. I'll just show you it running. Um, I, like, I always like to show TV paint because <laughs> uh, I, I lack any kind of artistic talent, but I, I love the tools. Um, let's load this one back up again. Uh, right here we go. So yeah, I know, thank you very much. If I load up TV Paint now, I'll open up a nice big, a nice window. Again, it's got the same kind of problem. It's it's uh, it's not loaded in the. Um, it won't go 1920. Some of them just won't reach it. Uh, let's go the robot one. Uh, crop image. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to grab some of this. I mean, it's that old test I, I do time and time again. But now, can you see how smooth that is? You know, I, I'm moving around a massive 24-bit brush. And see how smooth that is? I, I, it just makes an absolutely wonderful uh, Amiga OS system. Now, uh, let me check, I'll do the same one. I know I've probably, you've seen this before. You're probably getting sick of it. But it's nice to show the uh, performance. And that's the only reason I do this. If I clear the screen and then double click on this and just stretch that out, bang. I mean, how fast is that? I mean, it's just amazing working with that massive brush. I, I, I just, just, you know, I, I mean, if you, if you want to run Amiga software, now I'm going to cover, I think I'll cover the subject of Amiga emulation in AROS uh, at the end, I think. Um, I'll come back to that anyway because I think it's the best way of doing it. Anyway, let's shut Janus down. Um, and what else have I got in it? Oh, I, I, you know, I absolutely love this. Um, <laughs> I found it. I, I really like. Oh, yes, here we go. So this is. I've got this actually running at 16. It's got a funny little strip down the side, but it's just the way it, it runs in full screen. Um, but yeah, this is running really like 1400, 1600 by something or some weird resolution. I really like this. Oh really suck at games uh, okay let's quit yes and again if you want to um, you know it's <laughs> it's for all intents and purposes I mean it is as far as I'm concerned it's an Amiga okay I mean I just really think it is uh, okay so um, there'll be some comments no doubt soon um, thanks so much so um, I hope you can see from this series of three videos that for a very little cost you can make a really nice AROS machine. Uh, but why would you want to use AROS? I mean, um, you could be using Amiga OS, you could have Amiga OS 4, more FOSS, etc, etc. Well, it's a long story and I'm going to be doing a video soon um, about my history in the Amiga world, going back 20, 25 years, um, which I hope will kind of you'll understand then why I believe so much in AROS. But the real, the real, the nuts and bolts of it are, AROS, people have said, oh, well, it's not, it's not Amiga, it's just been rebuilt, it's like, you know, um, vo uh, wine, whatever they could, yeah, wine, that's it on Linux. It's very true. Um, it's, it's been completely rebuilt to be completely software, source code compatible with, Amiga, Amiga operating system. So you, if you've got a Amiga application, apart from the, you, the usual tweaks to get the better, the better graphics, etc., you can pretty much recompile your Amiga C, C applications and put them onto AROS. It's very, uh, it's really advanced. I mean, I be, bear in mind, um, the AROS boys did not have the source code to work from, which uh, obviously Amiga OS 4 had the source code to, to get going with and all that wealth of information and yeah I think we're further on than they are and this is not a dig at them I promise you that um, it's just the reality of it we're, we're, AROS is really advanced I mean it's, you've seen the 3D graphics it's a really good 3D engine um, 
there's the uh, multi-core is working and I will do a video about the multi-core but multi-core is working it's not ready for prime time yet I mean it's, you, you can download it and run it if you want to but it's it's not ready for the distro yet but again hopefully we're going to be able to push that along a little bit there's some more drivers coming um, I, I, as I said, I've done the drivers in the past, and I'm going to do, try to do a new round. But I'm, I'm, whereas in the past it was all about making really, you know, again, low cost machines, but quiet. If the Amica system, the thing was they're making it very quiet, but not the performance. It was based on Atom technology. Nowadays, I'm looking at the really high performance chips that you can get and get AWOS on there. I mean, none of the Amiga, Amiga flavors need an awful lot of processing power, so if you have got a lot of processing power, you can do some amazing stuff. Um, so I, I think, you know, you've seen there's there's a number of machines that I, I've shown you here, um, and you can build a pretty good um, AOS machine. Now, at some point, if, if people get in touch, I know that building machines is not for everybody. Um, if you're interested, I, I'm prepared to build machines for people, and I am going to charge extra. Um, but I think as you've seen, and I'll put in the description, the cost of this, I mean, the new the, the new machine build, as you saw, the motherboard and chip was only £105. Total build cost of that was under £200, including the, the extra bits um, that you need. And that's a complete AROS machine, mostly made from new components. The key thing, the key parts are all new. And the only things that second hand were the... Um, the sound card and the graphics card at the moment, okay, because of its NVIDIA, but we are hoping to solve that soon. But again, I mean, um, uh, you, I, I, I do think if you want to build an AWS machine, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, that machine you've seen there, pretty much new, 200 pounds you can build yourself, and I'm going to give you all the links to all the parts. So you can do it yourself, and then you can you know customize as much as you like. But obviously, if you're doing that, it's you know I'll, I'm happy to give advice, but the reality is you're building your own machine. Okay, um, if you want, if you do want me to build you one, I'm quite happy to do it. There will be probably it'll be three hundred pounds for the same machine. So there's a you know like a whatever a, th a third extra on top, which I'll then share with developers and, and put towards the the development of AROS. So the money will go to good use. Um, but you know. The reality is, uh, you get an awful lot of performance. You get an actual Amiga, uh, I think a great Amiga operating system. I know it hasn't got the Amiga OS badge, okay, and I know that. I, I personally don't care. Um, I've got a fantastic Amiga experience. I've got probably the most advanced Amiga experience. Uh, I can run all the latest software. Uh, I can emulate the um, uh, the the 68K Amigas easily. I, I mean, you've got the Vampire cover, which is a fine product, 400 pounds again. But I can I can run all the Amiga software probably on this machine two or three times as at least twice as fast as a Vampire. Wipe the floor with that. Um, so you know what's not to like about it? Um, it just doesn't have the badge. Well, I mean, you know, as I said, if if you if, if you think you must have it, um, that's fine. I mean, I'm you know, all, I, I hear people moaning about the um, uh, Eon boards. Hey, come on, do you have any idea how much it costs to make them, to design them? I mean, the fact you've got you're getting these these amazing PowerPC systems for that money, I, I, you know, yes, they are really expensive. I'm not, I I I I wouldn't want to spend that much money. Um, but you know what you're getting is a custom-built machine, very low volume, so you should, you can't moan. And if you want the badge, the Amiga OS badge, then you need to spend the money. However, if you just want to enjoy the Amiga software, run all the old stuff, be able to create new, uh, be able to develop for Amiga, because you can develop for Amiga on this, you know, um, then um, I, I think this is a better platform for a couple hundred quid, um, like twice the performance. So you know, there you go. So that's the end of that. Enough rambling. Um, Hopefully you'll subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit the alarm button um, because then when I've got this my history thing and how it relates to AROS etc etc that's coming soon. Um, the reason was on the Mega World. I, someone mentioned it about doing it about this PCI Mega card, um, and then I asked the question: Are people interested? And a whole load of people came back and said they're interested. So it's warts and all. I'm not going to hold anything back. You'll hear about my mistakes, blah blah blah. So um, if you're interested in that, and you also probably gauge why I'm so passionate about this stuff, because at the end of the day, all I want to do is keep this 
this platform alive for as long as possible. That's it, okay? I hope you enjoyed the videos um, and hope to see you in the next ones. Thanks a lot, bye.